harshed tones, the mood grave, telling of the tragedy that brought these family members, their lawyers and friends together. These women mourning the death of a man they all loved, brought together by their common desire to know what exactly caused the athlete's death, and Teresia stood her ground in the face of the other women. The post-mortem examination started later than expected, temporarily halted by a tussle among family members after Wanjiro's mother made fresh demands regarding the process. Three pathologists led by the chief government pathologist Moses Njoe and two private pathologists, each representing the mother and the wife of the deceased, were present. And as the hours dragged on, tension mounted, weighing heavily on each of the bereaved. And after several hours of examination, it was established that the cause of Wanjiro's death was an injury to the head. But the results were inconclusive as to how exactly the injuries were sustained. There are several loose ends which need to be tied up. We need to, f to firm on the toxicology. 25% of the investigation remains to determine how Wanjiro sustained the injury to the head that caused his death. This has been scheduled for Wednesday when the pathologist will visit his Nyahururu home to determine whether the distance he is said to have fallen from could have occasioned the fatal injuries he incurred. The lawyers to the mother and the wife of the late Wanjiro are satisfied with the results of the investigation so far but have not agreed on a date for Wanjiro's burial. The post-mortem results are out but there are questions yet to be answered the latest being when will Samuel Wanjiru be laid to rest? Maureen Muremi, Citizen Weekend.